Hey guys, welcome to my channel. In this video we're going to have a look at how I've completed these three meerkats, including a real-time explanation of the third meerkat. In the description below I'll put a list of the paper and pencils that I've used as well. If you like this video remember to like and subscribe and if you attempt a piece like this please tag me on Insta and you can see what I have for sale on Etsy. So let's get started. So this is one of the first pieces that I've done with three animals in the shot so because I am right-handed I started on the left hand side of the page just so that when I'm working over to the right hand side I'm not constantly leaning on what I've already done so I started with this left hand meerkat and started to put in the eyes I really like to start with the eyes just because it gives you some personality and a really good place to work on from and start to add in fur around the face for this sort of texture and because these faces are so small I really recommend making sure that you have a really sharp pencil. I have made a video about the different sharpeners that I use and how I get such a sharp point so if you're interested just check that one out and I also do some leaves in real time in that video as well. I'll put a link in the description. So for the base layer that I used for each of the meerkats so where there's sort of orange or yellow fur I used ivory as a base. And then in the whiter fur section, sort of around the nose and on the right hand side of the face and definitely on the chest and that, I used a warm grey one, working up to a warm grey three and started to add in sort of blues and pink colours like the sky blue, light ultramarine and beige red. A really important thing to remember when doing texture like this as well is to make sure that you're following the right fur direction. So. As you move further down the body you can see that the fur starts to go in different ways and all around the body it sort of moves in different ways so making sure to pay really close attention to your reference photo and just following the direction of the fur and doing your fur strokes in that way. So the main thing that I do is go in and put in the base layer of the warm grey one or ivory and then start to glaze in some of the colors I can see underneath the fur. So there are like purples, reds and blue colors. And then just start to build up the darker tones with the Payne's Grey Burnt Sienna Walnut Brown and then some of the dark sepia to get really dark in and around the face and in the darker sections of fur. One of the colors that I did use in there was the violet which works really well with orange colors so because it is a complementary color with orange they go really well together and when you put orange and purple down together it sort of makes it like a grayscale effect so it's really good for adding shadows and making it look darker without going in with any darker browns which makes it look a little bit muddy. When it came to fur on the back of the meerkat it is just about putting in a lot of layers and building up section by section to get that really deep fur look. Then once you start to add at least a second meerkat in you can step back and start to have a look at your values and see where you need to get darker and lighter. So a really important thing with realism is to make sure that you get the darker and lighter tones in the right places and that's what will make it look sort of 3D and realistic. It doesn't always matter so much if the colors that you're putting in aren't 100% correct or the same with the reference photo but if you make sure that your darker and lighter tones are in the right places it really helps it come together. So on the back of the meerkat just putting in a lot of layers so building up the tones with the light tones, the mid tones and then the darker tones. So let's get into this third meerkat in real time. Alright so we're just going to do this guy today. So I'll just start by lightly outlining the eye. My outline here isn't great, I will admit. I just sharpen this a little bit so it's nice and pointy. So just really nice and lightly because if you're not happy with it you can always rub it out. If you go in too hard It's really hard to get up. Something like this. Down. Down here.
And across the bottom. Like that. So now we have some of the darker areas in, we can start to get rid of some of the um, graphite in the middle, just crisp this up, so it goes like that and then there's sort of like a, section here Perfect, and then we can um, erase the graphite in the middle just really lightly and then I'm going to use my white Holbein waxy pencil just to put in the highlight in the eye, so there's some at the top here. So just rubbing it over like a medium pressure and then there's a little bit at the bottom there. So what we do is go in with the warm grey one and do a base layer over everything. I think as well there's this section here goes down like that and then it's a bit of a white bit here so we'll just map that in so we don't go over it. Warm grey one. So you just want to go around the white section that we just put in. At the top, <laughs> yeah, and then have a look at the colors that we can see in there. So I can see a lot of oranges and blues and purples. So I'm just using my colour picker on Photoshop and then I'll use the Burnt Ochre just to go in really lightly towards here so it sort of goes underneath. So all of this we're going to go over with the dark sepia anyway, but it just puts a little bit of a base colour underneath so that it's not just a flat black colour. And then through the middle it's more blue, so I'm just going to use the sky blue. Through the middle, so just small circular motions. Remember really light pressure, you don't need to go in too hard or anything. We'll go over the orange section as well. It's just building up the colour and getting, uh, mapping out all the different shapes that you can see. And then into the highlight at the top there is a little bit of blue, so I'll go over that with the, the white, go over the white waxy pencil with the blue, just lightly. Perfect. And then on the side here, so the colour is this blue colours. So in this little bit too, go blue. Really really tiny little details so it's really important to have a sharp pencil so my um, dark sepia I've put on the sanding block so it's really nice and sharp. 
So then we'll just go around lightly fill in the darker color. There's a lot of brown in the other eyes as well, so I want to be consistent. So I'll go in with the walnut brown. And add in some brown color. Build that in nice and lightly. So we can start to make this little shadow smaller and it's sort of like a an half moon shape. drag this section down a little bit just with the dark sepia make it a bit longer and then go around harder around the outline really outline those shapes to the top of the eye I might even put a little bit of dark indigo in there as well. That's like the darker blue color. So it'll help darken it up without making it sort of flat. So then we can start to shape this um, highlight that we can see. So it sort of goes like that. It's got a bit of a dotty section in the middle. So if you just try and think about it in the way of like shapes, it makes it easier to break it down rather than trying to pinpoint everything. This bit's a bit pointy. And then we'll use a little bit of blue in this section down here and then a little bit of warm grey one to blend it down. It'll make like a little highlight section. And there's also a little highlight section here. So we'll put in the warm grey one, sky blue, blend it with the white and then go around it with the dark sepia. And then over the top of the eye, so this is a little bit more of a point. And then it goes right up here. Cool. And then sort of around the outside, it's sort of darker. And then in the middle, it's sort of bluer. So dark indigo really outline that shape and that can be maybe even a little bit smaller blend it down and so there's like a bit of a shape here and then it goes like that And then there's a really big blue color in here. So I'm going to use the light ultramarine because that's a little bit more um, prominent. And 
I'm just using the really sharp point, putting it in very lightly over the white waxy pencil because it doesn't go down very well, which is what we sort of want. And then we can go over really lightly with the white, make it sort of look shiny. Over a little bit again. And then we can go around with the dark sepia and really sharpen up that shadow. Perfect. And then I might just sharpen this white pencil a little bit. Make sure it's clean. And then there's a little bit of a whiter section here, so point that down. Dub dub dub. Yeah. And then sharpen this bit up will make it look nice and shiny. Dark indigo again. Well, that's pretty much the eye. Maybe a little bit of um, ultramarine again. It is quite blue. And so this highlight is a little bit, it's got a bit of a gap in the middle. I haven't left much room, but that looks all right. So there's really little tiny details. And you sort of want it to have like a circle shape because it's an eye perfect so then we'll start to do some of the skin around the eye so I'm just going to use my warm grey one and use my kneaded eraser just to get up some of that colour So we start um, by going in the direction of the fur and the face and you sort of just want to map out the shapes that you can see and where you want this. So I'm just focusing more on the like the grey purple colour around the eye. So I'll just check on my colour picker in a sec which colours we can see. So there's lots of blues and purples at the top. Yep, so we'll do the sky blue to start with in this corner. Really, really lightly. There's sort of a sky blue sort of section here. And we'll use a little bit of the purple, which is just the violet. Yeah. And there's a lot of blue up here so we'll do more blue the sky blue and there's sort of a crease above the eye so we'll use the purple to put that in really lightly so just mapping out the shapes that really lightly and then underneath is more blue so at the moment he looks like he's been 
punch in the eye a little bit <laughs> but we will darken it up and so right underneath the eye is like the water line so to do that we're just going to put in the sky blue which we did and then go over that with the white Holbein pencil just make sure it's clean and go underneath Make sure it's nice and sort of blended. And this section is white uh, blended out too. And then, so the color we can see is like a dark blue. So I might just use the dark sepia really lightly just to map in all the shapes. So under here, this is sort of a point, it goes like this. And then here, we'll map in the shape underneath the waterline, outline that a little bit, sort of goes out as well and then sort of disconnects. And it is really brown over here, so I'm we'll do some walnut brown. I even cap it Morton Violet as well, which is sort of a reddy brown. Put a bit of that in, and then back to the dark sepia, just really lightly because we're going to blend it in with the warm grey one as well. Walnut brown in the browner section. And then at the top, use the dark sepia. Some of those shapes, and then we'll do this. So using the tip of the pencil, so it's really nice and fine, this line. over with the dark sepia really really lightly blend that in a little bit really really lightly and then this section is quite light so there's like a white highlight sort of section so we've got this in and then this goes down like that so go with the white pencil just to preserve that. Really lightly over and I'll even put in some of the violet as well. Because that will help darken it up without making it look sort of flat. Put in some of the sky blue. And then blend it all down with the warm grey one.
And then we can go in and start to put in all of the little details that you can see. So it really pushes the colour down. Then we can put in some of the little highlights, the little shadows, I mean. So go around here a little bit darker, bring some little lines out. Might even use the dark indigo to give it a bluer sort of tinge. Make it a bit darker around the sort of outside. And then where it's sort of really light around this side of the eye, we can do the white waxy pencil. Really bring that colour down. Make that a bit darker. Bend this down a little bit more. Then some really dark, dark sepia lines here. Help with that shadow. And then putting some lines in, blending it in a little bit, maybe a bit more purple up here, because just above here we'll put in the warm grey one a little bit. And then a little bit of purple, violet. Dark sepia, shade it down a little bit and add a couple of little sort of fur lines to make it look like it's starting to transition into fur. Flick that up. Perfect. So I think what we'll do next is um, this other eye and then we can just connect the fur in the middle. Yep. So we're going to do the same thing again. Dark sepia. We're going to outline this shape of the eye. So really lightly. Around here. here, might even bring it up a tiny bit. It's a little bit of a dark line here, and then it goes around. So we're just outlining the pupil. Goes like that. Perfect. And then I might use the warm grey three, sharpen that a little bit because I just don't want to lose the outline of this section. So it goes from about here 
around and here perfect and then there's some little highlight sections in that sort of bit so same thing again erase the middle not much in there and then use the white waxy pencil make sure it's clean put in the highlight so it's just sort of here there's even a couple of dots in here just add that in just to make sure it stays bright and then bring that out as far as we can because it's quite dark that line so there's sort of a little light line here. Then this way. Cool. Bring it over a little bit. Then warm grey one as the base. Let's go over the whole thing pretty much because that white waxy pencil is in there. Um, we're going to use some burnt ochre around the side. Sky blue in the highlight we'll just go over the whole thing as well and even around the outside the um, warm grey one get rid of some of that pew pew And then we'll put some brown in. It's even sort of nougaty colours in this one. Let's warm up brown in here. Warm it up a little bit and even Maybe a little bit of burnt sienna just to enrich that colour. And then dark sepia. So, sort of like a dark dot here, and then a little bit on the side, and then it's dark up here. Down here, go around that, really outline the shapes that you can see and you can even use the warm grey one. And so then in here, sort of like an orange dot. Another sort of darker dot here. Just outline that really crisp dark sepia. And then there's sort of a really white dot in there. Just dot that down. 
very, really small, tiny details. And you can even go in with the white and just gently blend all of that. It'll wash it out and make it look nice and bright. And then we can add a little bit more orange, burnt ochre, walnut brown. Perfect. And then underneath here, make that darker. So what's happened is, let's try and find my slice tool, where is it, so this sort of shape is a little bit big so I'm just using like a regular sort of scalpel and just lightly um, rub it against the black. And it'll sort of come up a little bit, not too much, and then fluffy brush, blow it away, and then we can go back over with the white, change the shape, it's a good way to fix mistakes. do. Put in a bit of the burnt sienna. Walnut brown. Really get that blue colour with the light ultramarine. Perfect. So we've already gone over with our warm grey one layer. And then I'll add in some of the sky blue. So there's a section here and then it sort of goes up to the ridge. And then across here. This is outlining the shapes with the blue colour because we're going to go over it anyway. So it's good to put in the base and also map out the shapes that you can see and where things are going to go. blue colour and then I can see a bit of purple down here so just really lightly shading up the top same thing again mapping out the shapes and putting down the tone So doing the purple and the blue colour will darken it all up without sort of making it muddy. And then put in the dark sepia really lightly over that and then we can blend it again with the warm grey one like we did before. really really lightly. Another way to make sure that you're doing it lightly could be to hold your pencil further back and that will prevent it from sort of making too much, putting too much pigment down at once. Goes up like that. Just 
shade down the color. Round it off a little bit more. It sort of goes down. And then warm grey one. Blend all of that down. So it smooths it all together. And then we can go over with the darker colours and make the details that we can see. So with the dark indigo so glazing, shading and doing some little fur marks make it all come together in there. So this one looks a little bit sad, doesn't he? Concerned. <laughs> and then it's really lightly glazing the dark indigo. And darkening up around the edges. And so this sort of white section around the eye we can put in with the white. I'll just try and sharpen it a little bit more. The white waxy pencil is great but it is really hard to get a sharp point because it's just so soft. Um, so it goes from here all the way around. And it sort of goes down here too, so we can lightly blend it and then shade it back down with the sky blue. Go back around with the dark sepia. Cool. Pretty much it. Darken this up. This up, maybe a little bit more of the violet. Sky blue. Warm grey one. Dark sepia. Little fur lines, little dots and speckles, add some texture. Perfect. So now what we can do is start to add in some of the fur on the head and then do the mouth and then the ear and connect all of the fur. So the colour of the fur on the face is pretty sort of pink, but there are and creamy colours, but just above the eyes it's quite white. So we're gonna do the warm grey one as a base. And then he's got some pretty funny 
whiskers coming off the top. So I've left the whiskers on the other ones because I'll do them all at the end. Because they're nerve wracking and sort of a final thing to do. So just lightly shading it down in the direction that the fur is going. So above this eye it's sort of going up and then into the middle. In the middle it's just coming straight down. And then on the right hand side it's sort of going to the left and then around to the right. So you can't really see it but it is just good practice to go in the direction that the fur is going. And yeah, it sort of sets the tone for where you're going to put things down. Put some around here, we'll go right up to the nose. Layer it down. And so, where there is uh, orangey browner sections we're going to put the um, ivory pencil which is very small and blunt but we only need a tiny bit so let's not worry about it so in the middle you sort of think it's very light and it doesn't really do much but it really does like it just adds a bit of a glow to it there's even a little bit on this side Just around the outside, so in the direction of the fur, putting this down. And then on top of that, we're going to put some of the beige red. So putting the warm grey one, the beige red and the ivory just gives it like a really nice sort of peachy tone. And warms it up a little bit and creates like a unique color rather than just using sort of one of them and it's pretty much the same process I've done for all of the fur on the meerkat so I've used these three colors all of where the sort of orange fur is really lightly and then you can also go in with the sharp point so rotate your pencil to get the sharp point and put in a couple of little um, fur lines. It just adds a little bit to the texture. Perfect. And then, so where the whiter sections are. We're just going to use the warm grey one, do some little fur lines, so the same thing. And we're going to space them really far apart because this section is really black and white, so we want it to stay nice and white. So if we put them too far together, it'll make it too dark. So... You can even flick some of them into the darker section. It's probably really hard to see on the camera, but it does make a little bit of a difference. I just want to bring this around a little bit more. It's meant to be a bit more circular. Cool. And then for the whiter sections above the eye, I'll just use the Warm Grey 3. Nice and sharp, so that it has a really nice, um, sharp point. So remember, spacing them really far apart, really light um, fur lines. So coming up and out. So these ones go sort of into the middle. And then these ones do the same thing. 
out and around so just really lightly spacing them far apart not too close together otherwise it'll be too much of a saturated color it sort of comes around so we'll go around the corner pew 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 excellent and then there's a little bit of a blue tone and that's more pinky there's a bit of a purple vibe happening on this side so what we're going to do is use the violet put in some fur lines as well really far apart spacing them out not too dark not too hard it just helps to add a little bit of shadow and then we put down a little bit of blue just here to help the shadows and help darken it up a little bit of blue here as well so putting blue color in white fur really makes it look a lot brighter and then what I'm going to do is use the white luminance pencil so mine's really small I do have a new one but I'm not ready to use it yet and what we can do is just shade um, really lightly over this so that will help to smush all of the colors together that we've put down and give you a really nice smooth base to work on so this is sort of all the base colors and then we can go in and start putting the darker um, colors in so smoosh it all down makes it nice and smooth and then we can use the um, dark indigo and start to flick out some of these hairs so again really really lightly not too close together pretty far apart and it'll make it look like there's gaps in between the fur and we can flick a couple into the um, orange section and we're going to flick a couple of little things onto this other guy and a little bit off the side into the middle again really light small tiny flicks pew 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 Cool, so I don't think I want to do much more because it'll be too dark, but maybe near the base, just do a couple of the dark sepia. And on this side. Perfect. I'll just shade that down with the warm grey one. Maybe some of the white. Blue. Cool, so then in the middle we'll start to add some of the orange tone. So going into the orange tone back into the white section make it look like the white is overlapping the orange which is sort of what is happening really small light fur lines again spacing them pretty far apart because it's not just orange fur there's like white speckles in between orange fur back into the white fur really really sharp pencil and then we can use some of the walnut brown sharpen it up really nice same thing again really far apart not too many it will darken the orange fur it's 
It's all about like layers and building up the colors rather than you know just doing one sort of color in a section. If you add in a lot of colors it makes it a lot more realistic and um, like sort of not as flat. Excellent. And then might just put down, go over again with the um, beige red just to bring out that pinky colour again and sort of blend it together. that brown even a little bit I think of the Caput Mortem Violet which is the ready brown color I'll just sharpen it up a little bit another thing good thing about using the sanding block is just that it um you don't need to sharpen your pencils as much and just saves you a bit of money like you don't need to the more that you sort of sharpen them the more you use and then cool it's hard this section sort of like really creamy bright creamy colour so we'll blend that down and then go in with the walnut brown and then So just up from the ear, there's like a darker sort of row of hairs. Here as well. Cool, then we can start to work on this nose section. It's a bit funny because he's got like a little bit of a bump here, which hopefully when it's um, on the page it won't look odd because sometimes things don't always translate <laughs> with um, colour pencil. So the colour that we have here is sort of like a pinky grey colour. So to get that I think we'll, we've done the warm grey one. Then we'll do the beige red. There's even some more white hairs coming here so we'll just do a couple of them with the warm grey one. Warm grey one. And then it's not really fur here it's more like well, it's like really short fur. And then here And then I think we'll do some nougat, the nougat colour. And so we'll work some of these up into this first section. 
and then just really lightly start to blend it down into here. So just a really, really light little shading, sort of like, you know, just rubbing your pencil really lightly over the paper. There's no real direction. So you just want to gradually build up the tone. There's sort of like a darker section here. Cool, so this colour is pretty good. I think it's sort of matching it. So it's sort of like a darker section in the middle. And then this section is sort of an orangey colour. So we'll put in burnt ochre. So same thing, like small sort of circular motions really really lightly and then we can go over with the white to bring out that orange color and smoosh it all together I might that's the white waxy pencil but I might even use the white luminance pencil and go over this section so this goes hard up against here and then there's sort of that color here so that all goes in there And so it's important to get like there's like a rivet sort of here because you want to make it look like his nose is round. So start to get darker in some of the areas that you can see. Just lightly building up the tones. Blend it down with the white pencil and it'll smoosh it all together. And bring the colour down so then you just go over and start to build it all back up again. So... Maybe even some of the warm grey 3. Mm, I think we'll just do the nougat again. And then if we use some of the violet in the nose, <coughs> excuse me, we'll um, darken it down a little bit and um, add some shadow. So just really, really lightly. Adding some shadow. And in this section and then we can also go in with the sky blue and do the same thing so mixing the blue and the purple colors together gets a really good sort of um, shadow effect sort of darken it down up here as well and same with the purple And then in between here, it's sort of a little bit darker in the brown tone, so we use the walnut brown. And then again with the walnut brown, a bit darker. And so it's sort of hard to know like how hard um, dark to get here because we haven't put in the nose and that. So what we'll do now is put in the nose, put in some sort of lines here, a bit of texture, and we'll put in the nose. So to do that, dark sepia pencil, really nice and sharp. Zoom in a little bit more. And then 
outline the shape of the nostrils, so same sort of thing for the nose as the eye. Sort of do the outline, put in the base colours, and then blend it down with the white and the warm, warm grey one. And that sort of goes like that. Like this. And then sort of darker areas here. Mapping out some of the shapes and then it'll go around up here. Hmm. Around like this. So these ones have a little bit of dirt on their nose. He does a little bit, but not as much. Cool, so that's about the shape that we want. And then go in with the warm gray one. All over the whole thing. No sort of direction, just sort of circular motions really lightly. A couple of layers of that. Go in with the sky blue, because there's quite a bit of blue in most of it. Just leave the centre bit out and there's a bit sort of on the right hand side that is a little bit... Oops. Went down a bit too far. I don't think it'll matter, but let's keep it anyway. Get some of that in. And then there's a little bit of pinky orange tone, so we're going with the beige red in the middle, in the middle and then a little bit of the burnt ochre put some colour in there perfect and then Going with the harder pressure of the dark indigo, which is the bluey, blacky colour. So this side is quite dark. And then there's a little bit of white here, so we're going to use the soft white pencil to keep that sort of a light blue colour. Even in the front and even in this bit as well. So go in with the dark sepia and get really dark with the nostrils. So this is where you sort of want them to be kind of even and correct shapes. Going up, blend it in a little bit. Um, over here. Just start to get darker in different areas. Go over the whole thing pretty much with the dark indigo really lightly. And then we can blend that down a little bit with the white and the warm grey one again. 
So just going around those little bits of dirt on his nose. In there I'm even put a little bit of purple in the bottom as well because that will darken it up. Get some more shadow. And then we're just going to sort of make little patterns and like keep little bits of orange where there's little speckles of dust. It's using the dark sepia and the dark indigo. Make some little marks in there. Getting darker and then add in some of the white to add some little highlights, blend that down a bit, then add in some little highlight sections. like yeah. rotating a pencil <laughs> my dog is playing and then a little bit of purple a little bit of purple at the top to help the shadows Cool, and then we can start just connecting everything around it. So we'll start with the top. So there's a little bit of dark speckles. So maybe I'll use the Bista for this one at the top. So really sharp pencil and just making little sort of dots. Just makes it look a little bit like there's something on his nose. And then we need to get a little bit darker on the ridge of the nose as well. A little like bit of grass there or something. Use some of the walnut brown on this side. And then getting a lot darker. So you can go in and like keep playing around with the shadows. Let's put a couple of walnut brown ones in here just to blend it down a little bit. It's looking a little bit too like he's got these huge white <laughs> um, eyebrows, <laughs> which is a bit funny. Cool. And then we'll do some of the face. So I think I'll just get rid of this line a little bit, but the mouth, you know, will probably be covered anyway, so we don't really need to worry about that. So this side, under the nose, it's all pretty white and bluey greeny colours. Go in and start to add some of the darker sections, so with just with the war, uh, warm grey one, because we're just mapping out what we're doing first. It's like a line there, a line here. The mouth is here, so we don't want to lose those lines. It looks a bit grumpy, this one. 
and then down here and there is some little like whiskers sections here 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 yeah and then that in and then underneath the nose it's sort of like a burnt sienna bista color so I'll go in maybe with I'll put a little bit of the pink in because I want it to be sort of bright and then some bista just go into the darker sections outline them Darker section, outline that, and then sort of get darker. Just like little, little shading. Don't put um, fur lines or anything because it'll look like he has a bit of a moustache. And I'll just blend that down with the white luminance pencil. So you could even use like a polychromous white or just like any sort of hard white, firm hard white is fine because it just blends it down a little bit. Add a little bit of walnut ground under here to darken it up. And I was feeling burnt sienna so maybe a bit of burnt sienna. Nice. I sort of feel a little bit of yellow in this tone so I think I didn't pick sometimes I pick like a raw umber which is a brownie orange but we've just got some dark cadmium yellow so I'll put that in really really lightly give it some orange tone and then more burnt sienna darken it up And then walnut brown. All right, and then in the side, there's a little bit of blue. So we'll put in a couple of strands of blue really lightly into the white sections. Remember, it makes it look a little bit brighter. The light ultramarine or sky blue, it doesn't really matter. And then I'll put a little bit here as well and maybe some Bista. Go in a little bit darker with the Bista in the top so we don't lose them. And then Glaze that in, start to get a little bit darker. The walnut brown, even a little bit of dark indigo, maybe, into these very little shadow sections. Darken up under the nose. Put in a few more of these, darken it up. Cool, and then 
in the side sections we'll put a little bit of the white blend it down make it all nice and smooth after putting the blue in put in a little bit so it's a mixture of like shading and fur strokes really short Blend it down with the white. And then we'll go in with the warm grey three. Really nice and sharp. Start from this section. And pull it out. Sort of a darker line here and then this side same thing little fur lines and it's sort of going out to the right hand side so we'll do them going out that way Just go up here as well just to connect it all together. And then to get the darkest we'll go with the dark indigo, make these little dots a lot darker. Adding in some little dots to darken it all up. It's a little bit of burnt sienna going on this side. Add that in, warm it up a bit. Then back over with the dark indigo. And then more dark sepia. I'm going to go in here with the dark sepia, really far apart little fur lines. Hmm. And then maybe a little bit more blue. Really lightly in here, a couple of little dark sepia lines, I think a little bit of the walnut brown. So it's kind of brown along here. And then I think we need to start adding the mouth. So use some of the warm grey three to start with. Get the shape this way. Make this a bit darker. And 
and then it is quite sort of grey so we'll do a little bit of the dark indigo really lightly Cool, so maybe we'll do the chin, maybe this section actually on the left hand side. going in the direction of the fur add in some fur lines with the warm grey one start adding in some texture and then a little bit of blue and then a little bit of B star because it's a little bit brown sort of in this section So it's sort of like a, a bit of a tangled mess here of fur and then some warm grey three. Bring them all right down. Then some dark indigo, just a couple of hairs. Really lightly. And then even a little bit of orange, which will help you know, blend in this orange into the white section. And then what we can do, because there's white hair going over here, we can add some in with the warm grey one and see how that looks. So you can't really see it. So then we'll go in with the ivory. Same thing, can't really see, so we'll go in with the white, maybe the, um, oh yeah, so you can see that a little bit, this is the luminance. And then the soft white pencil. There you go. And then even up here, brighten some little strands up. Cute. And once we get all of it in, we could go, we can go back and, you know, darken up some of these areas. So we'll do the chin. So start with the warm grey one, which we already did a base of that. And then we'll just add in 
some little white hairs with the warm grey one, really sharp pencil. So keep rotating the pencil. At the start, at the start, at the top, there's um, a little like pink lip. So we'll put in a little bit of the beige red. Then a little bit of the violet, very lightly. And then put some hairs coming out of there. Start the shadows. And then we just build up the colours. So the um, warm grey three. Start adding in some little hairs. So bringing the hairs from the chin back up into it will give the impression that there are little white hairs coming the opposite way. So doing some in the direction of the fur and some against the fur. And then getting lots darker, so we're going to this side with the dark indigo. Darker here, and then this sort of top lip is a little bit darker as well here. Down. And then bringing these furs from the lip up will give it the impression that there are furs overlapping the lip. So flicking it up, just a couple. Ooh, and then sort of Like that, dark sepia. And some of the darkest bits. And then under the chin, there's a bit of brown. So we'll put in the bista here. So going back up into the fur. And then some brown here as well. And there's sort of a brown section here where he's, here they've got the little mole thing under their chin, which is really cute. Um, a dark indigo to put in some darker hairs here. So remember not too many, space them far apart. Finally, dark sepia, just even fewer of these. And then we can darken that up a little bit with the purple because it is a bit too pink still. He's looking pretty cute. And then one grey one just to add this little 
bitty and we'll go over with the warm grey one and just blend it all down. And then some more dark sepia. And then we can even get the white and put a few little white sections in. So there's the bit of white highlight through the middle. Cool, so now we'll just go onto this ear. So what we're gonna do first is because there's a couple of strands that are overlapping this ear, like this other guy over here, we'll get our embossing tool. So we'll just use the really sharp tip. And then, so they come from here into the ear. So there's only about three or so. So you don't want to do too many. Make sure they sort of have like a bend to them. So then, warm grey one, maybe erase that a little bit, it doesn't really matter, but, oh, page is moving, and then, warm grey one, over the whole shape, and you can see the embossed lines coming out straight away, so also there's lots of purple in this one so we'll do purple pretty much all over actually because it's going to be covered up anyway in the direction of the fur but you can really see those embossed lines coming out so this is when you need to Make sure you're doing like sort of a soft pressure because if you go too hard it will go into the lines. And then brown. Actually I might do a bit of the Caput Mortem Violet because it is a little bit of a reddy colour up here. So where it's sort of the darkest, I'll put this in, so it's like sort of there, then here, here, And then maybe some dark indigo to start to darken it up. Into the darker sections. Some little fur lines going into the lighter section. And I'll use some of the walnut brown. Into the darker section again. And then start to do some fur lines. Really light shading actually. We'll shade down all of that purple colour. some fur lines going back into the white fur 
make it look like it's overlapping into the white fur or that the white fur is overlapping the darker section and then where it's sort of lighter on the ends we're going with the warm grey one and then even with the white again So make it like that shiny browny purple color. And then very dark in the dark section <laughs> in the middle, which is the dark sepia. And then do some strands coming back in and going out. Dark uh, burnt sienna. Come on, that's <clears throat> pretty much the little ear done. So then you can start go, going in and darkening up some of the different areas. So this is a bit darker up here. Perfect, so then I'll just go through, add the rest of the face and then probably this little bum section of this other guy and then yeah down here onto the body, onto the feet and then figure out what I'm going to do for the bottom which is probably do the rocks with all the same colours that I've used throughout here but just keep going on with it, it's looking pretty cute. So I really hope that you like this video. Remember to like and subscribe and let me know in the comments below what you would like to see next. There'll be cards of this print made on Etsy. Remember to follow me on Insta. And this is the final result. I'll see you in the next video. Keep drawing guys. Bye.